All right, we're live. <clears throat> Good evening, Corona Days Professional Development Group. I'm going to give you guys a moment to jump in there, but I'm ready to go because we are a little late, just eight minutes, but we're good. All right, so <clears throat> it's Thursday, March 11th, and I am honored to be hosting uh, Tia Aiken this evening, and she's going to talk to us. Her presentation is Money in Your Wallet. This evening, Tia is going to review simple ways that we can reduce monthly spending. Uh, through this presentation, we're also going to gain tips on generating money and rewards from accounts that we regularly use. A little about Tia. Tia believes uh, sharing knowledge and resources is the best way to foster individual and community growth. She has 18 years of experience in the banking industry where she has served consumers and small businesses. Tia has a vast background in debt management, credit analysis, uh, business lending, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, business lending, corporate training, and project management. So I am going to, this evening, I'm going to be managing Tia's uh, slide deck. <laughs> <laughs> so forgive me if I make any errors. I'm going to go ahead and remove myself from the broadcast. I'm going to put the presentation up and then Tia is going to begin. Thank you for being here with us this evening, Tia. Just let me know if you need me. I'm here, okay? Okay. Thanks so much, Danette. I appreciate it. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, thanks so much for joining. As Annette mentioned, I'm Tia. Um, I have been in the banking industry for quite some time now. And um, with this really great platform that Danette has uh, created, CDPD, I wanted to take some time to kind of share a little bit of the knowledge that I have um, and with the hopes that, you know, it'll be beneficial to you. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started and I'll present money in your wallet. As Danette mentioned, it's just some simple things that we can do to um, save some money. And also I'll share with you three tips on how to um, maybe find some new money as well as um, some rewards. So the first thing I do want to read a disclaimer. Um, I'm not a financial planner or a financial analyst. Uh, the content within this presentation and any discussion uh, that I engage in is for informational purposes only, and the content and discussion does not constitute as financial accounting or legal advice. So I just want to put that out there. I'm just sharing information. All right, so um, <clears throat> today's topics are going to be consumerism today. As I mentioned, um, ways to save money, ways to gain new money and rewards. Then I'll do a quick recap, and um, if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer those, but I will say, if you have questions throughout the presentation, it's going to be pretty short, I promise. But if you do have any questions, I don't mind taking them at that time, okay? So feel free to ask your questions. All right, so slide number one, or next slide. <laughs> All right, so one of the things I wanted to share with you was about consumerism today. Um, I found this really great article. It's a little bit older from 2019, but it's really pertinent for today. So um, Etienne Merino, in an article for Forbes, wrote, um, today's consumers are spoiled. They have everything at their fingertips. With a single click or tap of a button or one voice command, they can get anything they want in seconds. A chauffeur, dinner, clothes, books, mattresses, all delivered straight to their doorstep or wherever they want for that matter. And it's true, right? You can have a pizza delivered to the beach these days. Um, she goes on to say, smartphones are now the remote control of our digital lives. And I think that is very accurate. Um, and then uh, they have tipped the scales of power in favor of the consumers forever. So I totally agree with that. Um, consumers have everything at their fingertips. Um, then she also goes on to say, but the flip side of this power is the dizzying access to a pool of infinite options with an ever increasing number of products and brands available online, combined with gazillions of distractions like push notifications, tweets, text messages, and so forth. Each consumer is now like a goldfish in a digital ocean of noise. Like that really hit me. That's so serious. Um, as a result, their attention span is shrinking and so is their responsiveness to brand messages. So what you see on the screen is something that I thought was, real. again, it's really pertinent to today. And it was actually written back in 2019. So one of the things that I just want to take a, a kind of a second to think about, we do have so many options. Right. We have so many options for the um, the items that we buy. But one of the things that I want to focus on tonight is going to be our services. 
So the services that we actually utilize on a daily basis, things like our lights, um, car insurance, telephones, things that you know we kind of take for granted, they're just there. We can't necessarily touch the actual service, if you will, but it's things that we live with every day. And I think if we actually paid some attention to them a little bit more than we normally do, we could probably save some money. Okay, so consumerism in 2021, we want it now. We have more choices than ever. We want top quality, the best customer experience, and we will shop around to get it. Um, while we often apply this approach to items we buy, we don't apply it to the services we use. So that's what I want to focus on today. So let's talk about how we can save money on our services. Okay, five reasons we don't apply consumer savvy to our services. And I'm, I'm guilty with a lot of these, and you might be too. Um, we don't feel we have time. We don't have the latest info. Overwhelm, right? Too many options. We don't know where to start. And we will have to change auto pay or some other routine. And finally, we might have the time and the new info, but we're complacent, right? Also known as lazy. I'm a little guilty of that. All right, so let's talk about three reasons why we should be service savvy. We need to stay informed. We need to know our options. Options are everything. We don't just want one of anything, especially if there's more out there. We want all the options. We at least want to know what they are. And the third reason, we want to save money. I think that might be the most important reason of all, at least that's the reason why we're here tonight. We want to save some money. All right, so I'm going to have a quick sip of water. Give me one second. Okay, <laughs> um, saving money on the services you use. So the first one we're gonna talk about is insurance, right? We have car insurance, health insurance, uh, renters, homeowners, we have life insurance and disability. I think insurance is um, probably a big area, especially car insurance, where we can save some money. All right, so I think the biggest thing we can do with our services is perform an insurance checklist right? And it's for any of your services, perform a checklist, okay? Um, the checklist is simply a, a personal needs assessment. And these are the things that you might want to consider. Um, is there any coverage you no longer require? Um, you can reach out to an agent to see your options for decreasing your insurance levels based on your personal needs assessment. Remember, as we and the things we cover age, Discounts might be available. So if you think about um, when you first started driving, right? I'm sure the rates were sky high. Your parents might have been like, um, you're going to catch the bus because I'm not paying for that. But as we got older, we hopefully became better drivers. And over time, as we aged and the vehicles that we were driving age, you know, um, those premiums most likely went down, hopefully. Um, the biggest thing I can say here is you want to research companies to see who can offer you a better price for a comparable coverage. Remember, you don't want less coverage unless you are in a position where you're actually eliminating some of your services. So for example, um, if your car, you know, it's not a new vehicle anymore, um, you might be, you, maybe you don't need the full coverage option. That might be something you can live without if your state no longer requires it. So that's something to consider. That might be some savings there for you. I would suggest uh, taking a look, doing a needs assessment, reaching out to um, some local insurance agents. Right now, there's different uh, websites you can go on where they'll actually do a, a rate comparison for you. Don't know exactly how close it is, but I'm, you might wanna consider checking those things out because I think over time, um, insurance is probably uh, the fastest way you can save money. And so I'll give you a personal story. Um, I actually had the same insurance company for about two or three years. And when I went to a different company, my, my policy uh, premium was reduced by almost $100 a month. And I had the exact same coverage, everything that I had with my original company I asked for. 
and I actually got something a little bit better with the new company all for a little I think it was about hundred and six dollars a month cheaper so that's something that you definitely want to take a look at because that's more than a thousand um, dollars a year just by making one phone call okay so let's look at the next thing um, the next biggest thing <clears throat> excuse me is utilities this one can be major for you too. Um, gas, electric, phones, internet, cable, and streaming. Again, you want to perform a checklist. Um, can you choose which energy company you use if there's more than one in your area? Some some places, like if you think about Texas, if you recall uh, with the awful um, situation they had, a lot of them had multiple electric companies that served their area and they were able to select um, the ones that they thought would represent them the best. And so uh, you had a lot of people talking about in the news the different rates that people in, in adjacent areas were actually getting. So if you have the opportunity to, um, you know, uh, have more than one energy provider, you probably want to take a look and see which one is going to offer you the best rate, okay? Um, another thing uh, does your energy company offer a free energy audit that could pinpoint ways to save energy? Someone can come in from the energy company. They'll do an assessment of your home. Um, it might be something as simple as having you go to Home Depot and pick up some weather stripping for your windows and doors. But they'll be able to walk through your home and tell you where the energy is getting out and different ways you can save money. All right. So bullet number two. Um, Right now, if you need more internet speed, right? Um, a lot of us are working from home. We have kids uh, working, you know, or doing their schoolwork as well. Everybody's in the house. Everybody's kind of sucking up the internet. The speeds are getting lower and lower. Um, is there another company that might offer you, you know, a better speed or the same speed if you have a lot, but maybe for a lower rate because you're a new customer? I'll give you a good example. Um, a couple of years ago, I got a great internet deal, $49.99, more, um, what are those things called, NBPs or something like that than I could ever utilize. And I had a great deal with them. And when it was over, I called back and I said, hey, listen, this is a really good rate. Is there any way I could keep it? And the answer was yes. I was able to keep my $49.99 rate for two whole years instead of just the one they offered I just ask the question. It never hurts for us to ask. All righty. Um, next one. Are you still paying for cable TV? This is big. I gave up cable back in 2011. I literally had a like $20 antenna from Walmart on my TV. And I lived happily like that for about seven years. I, I didn't care because watching TV wasn't really major to for me. But if... If that's you, I promise you, you'll save a ton of money. Go get a, yourself a decent antenna and you'll be able to catch all the channels that you could possibly need. If you're not a big TV watcher, it might be something that'll work for you. Um, if you're paying for cable and you're also streaming your services, you know, is does that really make sense? Maybe take a look at what you're paying out and see if there's something that you can let go of. Um, that might save you some money. Over time, um, your streaming services and your cable, if you're still doing the cable, um, I mean, it adds up. It could be hundreds of dollars a year that you could save if you let something go, okay? Uh, what else do we have? Oh, phone plan. Is there a better phone plan for you? Um, I'm in the market for a brand new phone. Danette is always... Uh, teasing me that I need to go over to an iPhone because I still have my Android. I'm not quite ready to let that go just yet. But um, I am in the market for better service because I think I could be paying a little bit less money. So I'll research that and uh, I'll get back to you guys and tell you what I find. But um, one of the things I have noticed, there's a few companies that were offering a free year of streaming. Um, I, I think it was like T-Mobile was offering a year of Hulu for free, which, you know, if you don't already have Hulu, that's great. You know, you might be able to drop something that you're paying for and just go with that free service. I don't know if they're still offering it, but 
um, you know, definitely uh, take a look and see who's offering some great bundles. So Danette, I want to pause a minute. I don't know if anybody's online with us, but are there any questions out there? And I'm going to take a quick sip. Okay, I'm going to say one minute maybe not. I'm not sure because I'm I, I need to go to that <laughs> <laughs> that side. Um, let me get myself off of the screen. We have some comments I'll put on the screen and then we could go back. There are no questions, but I'll put some comments. Okay. Yep. Rhonda says we don't use we use services daily um, that we don't pay attention to. Yep. And it's a great way to save money if we start looking at those things. I agree. Ah, 40%. That's a lot of money. So Rhonda's using a fan instead of AC. Pretty cool. That is a lot of money. Right. Uh, yeah, 40% bill. All right, so we don't have any more comments or questions. I'm going to go ahead and share the presentation again, guys, and we're going to keep it moving. Oh, something going up there. Okay. Checking on Stormy. That's all. <laughs> All right, guys, so I'm just waiting to see uh, the share pop up because um, I was having some technical difficulties and Danette was gracious enough to um, work the presentation for me. Ah, I see Beulah, she gave up cable and she uses Netflix or YouTube. Perfect, it's a great way to save money. All right, great. All right, so here's one that is kind of big, memberships, okay? Um, you know, it's 2021, we're only in the month of March, but you know, I know there's a crazy pandemic going on and everything like that, everything's not always open, but I know me and probably 85% uh, of you guys out there, um, new year, new me, right? Everybody's joining the gym and exercising and going on some kind of diet. But if you belong to a gym or you're paying for any of the month club, like wine of the month, book of the month, uh, plant of the month, whatever it is, um, I say ask yourself two questions. And the first question, am I using it? Right. Are you using the membership or the of the month club, whatever it is, like if you're in the book of the month club and you've got six books sitting there that you haven't read, like maybe you might need to kind of think about that. And then the second question. Am I using it regularly enough to continue paying for it? Right. Because if you're not, you know, you might want to consider kind of rethinking that. Is it something that you really need to continue? All right. So this is a big one. Um, even for me, uh, groceries, save money on groceries, grow your own. If you have some land and you are fortunate enough uh, with some 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 open space where you can grow your own, get some great heritage seeds and start growing. I say grow your own. That'll save you a bunch of money. You can also shop at farmers markets if you're not fortunate to have that you know vassal of land, right? Also use digital coupons and grocery store rewards cards or apps. Like those are really good. Um, I know Ibotta. Um, that's I B O double T is in Tom A Ibotta. They are giving away just for signing up. They are a, um, a grocery store app. Um, I think I forget how many stores all across the country, but they're giving away uh, twenty dollars just for signing up. So that sounds like twenty bucks of free groceries. Uh, comparing labels and choose store brand over name brand. That is big. Don't get in the habit of, you know, oh, I saw this fancy commercial or the, the package looks really good. Don't get caught up in that. I would say to read um, the labels 
pick them up, hold them side by side, right? And look at the primary ingredients. And the primary ingredients are usually like the first three to five ingredients, I would say. And if they're the same, maybe you might want to consider going with the store brand, okay? Uh, big box stores, Costco, BJ's, those are pretty cool. And, you know, you guys, we can split the memberships. I think memberships are like maybe 40, 45 bucks. Um, I know in the mail regularly, I get offers for a year membership for BJ's for $25 a month. Not so bad. Uh, I will say last year during the pandemic, I actually joined one because I couldn't find water anywhere. Um, I couldn't find toilet tissue anywhere. So it just made sense. And when I walked in there, they had everything that I needed. So that, you know, $40 membership, it was worth it. And you can always split that with a friend or family member, right? Um, food co-ops. There might be a food co-op where um, you can like food co-ops to kind of grow your own or, you know, purchase. And then also um, I have seen some where, uh, farms that if you actually volunteer, um, with the harvesting and the planting and things like that, you can actually walk away with some free uh, produce for your efforts. So depending on where you live, that might be something you want to check out. So those were the ways um, for groceries. Um, yeah, we can go to, okay, perfect. So saving money around the house. Uh, these are some pretty, pretty simple tips. Eat in more, right? Um, I know that, once everything opened back up, nobody wanted to cook anymore. We wanted to go through the drive throughs We wanted to kind of feel normal again and sit in the, the different restaurants, right? But if, you, if you've been doing that, I would say just try to eat in more. Consider do-it-yourself projects or home repairs. YouTube has, I, I think you can learn how to do anything on YouTube. I actually fixed something in my house and I was really, really proud of myself. I had to watch um, Home Depot actually had a video and I watched that video probably about uh, four or five times before I was confident. I went to Home Depot, got you know everything that I needed. I watched the video five more times, but I, I fixed it and I was like really happy and kind of bragging about it for a couple of weeks and it saved me quite a bit of money. I didn't have to hire a handyman. Okay, what's next? Um, oh, this is big. If you have uh, kids, right, uh, you know, kids outgrow clothes and shoes and toys and everything really, really fast. But I would say swap your gently worn uh, children's clothes and toys with your family or friends. And that's going to save a lot of money all around for you guys. The barter system. This one has been around as long as people have been on Earth, probably. So you can trade an item or your time or expertise for something that you need. If you don't have it and somebody else has it and you don't necessarily have the means to pay for it or want to pay for it, see if you can swap your time or your energy or, you know, something that you might have in your possession. OK, so this one has been kind of fun. Um, incorporate events at home. Right. You can add Zoom or WhatsApp so that family and friends can join. And I have in the next few bullets a couple of ideas. Game night. Game night is pretty cool. Kids generally like game night. You can do a guys or girls night happy hour. Right. So instead of going to the bar, you can kind of like drink in. It's safer. Nobody's driving and you can save a lot of money. Uh, to your coffee chat, you know, or lunch or something like that with your family members. One of the things that's really important to me, um, I would say, don't forget our seniors. If you have some senior citizens in your family and they have smartphones, you know, whatever it is, even if they don't have a smartphone, um, you know, please call them, especially at this time. We want people, um, you know, to feel as normal as possible, especially our seniors. They're not as connected. Many of them are not as connected as, as we can be. They're not com uh, computer savvy, may not have computers, not everybody, but many of them. So do what you can to uh, keep them connected. That's like something really important to me. So please consider that when you have your next event. Okay, any questions? I talked a lot, I know.
it takes a minute for me to swap through. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry, Jeanette. No, it's okay. Don't worry about that. Don't worry I'm about that have at to all. Send you a paycheck or something. You were working hard. No, 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 no. That's fine. Um, no, I don't. I don't have any questions. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Do, so, do you have more slides? Cool, yeah. The next part we're going to talk about um, making, right. making, not making money, finding money. So. Okay, perfect. So let me go back here. Let me just get it up. Remove myself. <laughs> okay. So I have three ways um, that I find to be the easiest. Um, the first one that I'm going to share with you is kind of my favorite because to me it's the fastest and you can do this multiple times if you choose to. So three ways to gain new money and rewards. Number one are bank or is bank bonus offers. This one, uh, you guys may get these in the mail. Hey, uh, open a, up a checking account with our bank and get $200 or $300, whatever it is. These I like these and from time to time I do it. I haven't done it in a while, so I might have to do it soon. But I think this is where you're going to get your biggest bang for your buck, right? So uh, right now there are banks offering anywhere from $100 to $700 through the month of March for customers who open new consumer or business checking accounts, right? So in CDPD, I know that we have a lot of business owners. We have aspiring entrepreneurs getting their businesses off the ground. Um, there are uh, banks that are offering business accounts, you know, 200, 300, 400 dollars by just opening up accounts. Now, granted, um, you want to research the offers and you definitely want to read the fine print. Um, there is often a certain dollar amount to deposit or sometimes even a specific dollar amount that you need to maintain on a monthly basis and generally for a specific amount of time. So you definitely want to um, make sure that you're reading that fine print and asking questions. And if you're like me and you kind of like to do business at the bank, most banks right now, now are seeing people, but a lot of them are also, um, you have to make an appointment just to get into the branch. So be mindful of that. So, oh, here we are. Okay. All right. So the screen's coming back. All right. Here is a big thing. Um, I never want to steer anybody wrong. So whatever information I know, I'm definitely going to share it with you. When you utilize these bank bonus offers, just keep in mind, uh, you may be subject to a receive a 1099 tax form for the money that you receive. Um, and that 1099 tax form, one goes to the IRS, one goes to you. And the expectation is that when you're doing your taxes, right, the following year, that you include that money, whatever it is, $500, $100, whatever that bonus money was from the bank, whatever is in you know, in that little box on that form that you include that as income. So you'd have to really consider uh, the tax liability. Everybody's tax liability may be a little bit different, but let's just say you're going to get a bonus offer of $500 for opening up a new business account for your, your blooming business, right? You know, you have to consider, you know, I don't know what the tax liability is. If it's $50 or $20 or $75, but, you know, crunch numbers and see if it makes sense for you to pay $50 tax and get $450 for free, right? It's just as simple as crunching the numbers and just making a good informed uh, decision for yourself if, to see if that's what you want to do. Um, also, for the offers that are going on in March, you can visit your bank website or various bank websites. Um, or you can go to nerdwallet.com. It's right there on the page, nerdwallet.com, and also bankrate.com. And um, you'll be able to see a list of the major banks that are offering 
everything and it'll it'll take you right there to get connected. So that was bank offers. Let's look at the next way. Um, number two, way number two is investment apps. So this one I like. Uh, I know one person who is currently using it. And I know this company, Acorns, has been around for quite some time now. Um, it is an investment app. And it lets you, gives you the opportunity to round up any of the spare change from your purchases. And it will invest it for you. So you can link your credit cards, your debit cards right to Acorns, um, and those roundups that they'll do will occur automatically. And over time, if you think about all the purchases, you know, as many times as we're swiping our cards, over time, these roundups can make quite a difference. So I put an example here, uh, $3.50 for a cup of coffee, right? And what they'll do, because it rounds up to the nearest dollar, you pay the 350 for your coffee, an additional 50 cents will come out of, you know, the account that you have linked to Acorns, and that goes into your investment account, right? And if you do that for 365 days, because some of us go out and buy a coffee every single day, that's $182.50. That's what that 50 cents a day can get you, right? That's just the baseline. So whatever they invested in, you know, if that increases, you're going to have even more money at the end of those 365 days. That's just coffee. Think about how many times you swipe your card. But I think that um, I think I might have to look into this one. Now, Acorns also offers something called Found Money. They have a partnership with over 200 major brands, right? And those brands, when you shop at those stores, and some of those stores are uh, Walmart, Walgreens, Nike, Sephora, um, Macy's, and there's there's a ton more. You can go right to the website, but when you shop with those stores, what they'll do is they'll take, uh, they'll pay you, right? A certain percentage or dollar amount. And a lot of times there's a certain monthly limit, but essentially they're paying you to shop at those stores. They'll put that money right into your Acorns account for you. And I, I think, you know, if you're shopping anyway, it kind of makes sense to get paid for it. So um, using the investment apps, take a look at Acorns. Uh, acorns.com. Like I said, I haven't used it, but it has been around for quite some time. And I do know one person who's been using it and they seem to like it. Um, also, nerdwallet.com that I mentioned. Sorry, Danette. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've got Danette going back and forth with the screens. I apologize. But nerdwallet.com um, can show you um, some more about Acorns and some other investment apps. So if you are like me and you like to compare, I do like nerdwallet.com. They have also been around for quite some time as well. All right, next slide. I promise I'm done. <laughs> okay, this is my third and final. Uh, number three, way to gain new money and rewards, credit card promos. Credit card promos, these can be really fun but you have to be careful. <laughs> so let's talk about credit card promos. Okay, so the uh, promotional offers, they can be cashback, reward points, or both. Um, so your cashback cards will give you a percentage of each purchase right back to you. Like some cards, they might apply the cashback as a statement credit instead of uh, you know sending you the cash directly. So you have to read the fine print with that and make sure you're getting the type of card that you really want. So here's another example. Let's say you have a cashback credit card um, and your cashback card is going to give you 2% uh, on groceries, right? So we have 2% cashback on a $100 grocery purchase. That equals $2. So let's say you went to get groceries and then you go to get gas. And maybe the card you have has a 5% cash back on your gas purchases. So let's say um, you purchase $50 worth of gas. 5% of $50 is $2.50, right? So we're at $4.50 just from those two transactions. But if you get gas and you get groceries every single week, 
So we multiply that by 52 weeks, that's $234 cash back. That's just for gas and groceries alone. So this is another way where you can make, um, you know, some pretty good money with the cash back cards. Okay. But again, I, like I said, you have to be careful and we're going to kind of talk about that when it comes to credit cards. Rewards points. Uh, rewards points, another way to earn with your credit cards. These often can be redeemed for cash, travel, gift cards. I love gift cards. Um, ex any type of experiences. Sometimes there's like uh, concerts and, you know, all of these, you know, be the first person to catch this thing or that thing, whatever's going on. Um, you might be able to redeem your points for that but also read the fine print to see how the points are earned because sometimes in order to get those points, you might have to spend a certain amount of money on your card first. So that's one thing that you wanna um, consider. And then um, you wanna check and see if there's any restrictions or any type of expirations on your points. So that's very important. Always read the fine print and ask the questions. Okay, so. This is where I said with credit cards, it's great, but it can get a little tricky. If you're going to be applying for your credit cards, just remember, um, anytime you apply for new credit, it can lower your FICO score. I don't know what the exact points are. I don't know if it's five points, 10 points. I don't know. But I do know that when you apply for credit, it can reduce your FICO score. So be careful. I don't know that you want to apply for every single card that's out there. You kind of want to do it strategically. Um, do the research so, so that you can figure out the best card for you. Um, another thing to consider, so in bullet number two there, there might, there may or may not be a cap on cash back amounts, right? So you don't want to just be spending money willy-nilly just to get these points because it doesn't really make sense. You want to spend strategically so that you're getting the money where you're not you know, going overboard and bananas with it. You just wanna do your normal spend, right? Now, um, the biggest thing to remember, I think, is that these offers work best if there's no annual fee and if you pay your credit card uh, bill in full each month. And the reason being is because if your goal is to make money, so to speak, like some new money off of these cards, you don't wanna be paying additional money. So it's better if there's no annual fee and that you're actually not revolving a balance and you know paying any interest, okay? Um, let's see, what do we have here? What's next? Oh, okay. So that was uh, my top three, right? We have, the first one was bank bonus offers. Um, the second one was investment apps. And then the third was credit cards. So I'll do a quick recap and then I'll see if there's any questions. Um, so number one, you want to review your services yearly to stay informed. If you feel like yearly is a little too much to, to look over your insurance policies or any of your utility bills, then at least try to do it every other year. And here's the biggest reason. Um, if you recall the uh, excerpt from the article I read, you know, Consumers have so many options and the major companies, they know that, right? So they're always doing things to kind of draw us in, all right? So you want to make sure that you know what the options are, what are the offers out there, because there might be something better, you know, something that's going to save you money or give you more for your money. So, you know, just review those services. Next one is always research and read the fine print. Anything we do, we should hopefully research and look for that fine print. Um, bundle offers. You know, if you're doing a phone service or you're doing internet and phone and, you know, whatever it is, see if they can bundle them if you'll get a, a cheaper deal. Uh, take notice of any offer requirements and when your offers expires, that's important. Next one is to remember that the goal is to receive comparable or better services for less money, right? You don't want to get less service than what you had, you want it to at least be the same or better. Uh, again, a 1099 form could be coming your way if you receive any type of bonus money. And credit card promotions work best if there is no annual fee and you pay your balance in full, right? Because the goal is to get money, not to be giving the credit card companies extra money. 
Use cashback cards strategically, right? Don't spend willy nilly. Just do your regular spend and get those dollars or, you know, get those points. Um, and finally, when reviewing your services, memberships and bonus promo offers, just crunch the numbers and make the best possible decision for your situation. Just does it make sense? Is this going to put me in a better situation? And hopefully that will help you make your um, decisions. So at this point, just going to ask, are there any questions, questions, comments, concerns? Okay, so let's see what we have here. Oh, did I give you that one? <laughs> I think so. Rhonda is asking, are people still using Groupons? It's still out there. Um, I looked at uh, Groupon uh, probably two months ago. Um, one, It's funny because Groupon, I actually started seeing a lot of companies offering courses, you know, like different study courses for, for Groupon. I thought that was kind of interesting. Like, um, I can't remember the name of the actual company, but um, they were doing like a Lean Six Sigma. So for like $17. And I was like, wow, that's, you know, that's interesting. But yeah, people still use Groupon. Yeah, I use it, but I don't, well, because of the pandemic, I'm not using it for events. Right. Um, yeah. But I use it or for like services. I've always used it primarily for services and events and stuff like that. But early in the pandemic, I used it to buy a desk. To buy my desk. Like I wanted this desk. I have I have a one of these. I don't know which one, but it tells me if you find something on Amazon, it tells me who has it cheaper. Ah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, because you automatically think that Amazon has the cheapest everything. Right. And so the same desk was cheaper. It was like six bucks cheaper and it was still free delivery with yeah. Groupon. So I got it from Groupon. So that's the last time I used it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think they're kind of stepping up their game too. I think, uh, I forget, was it last Mother's Day or... Uh, one of, you know, the great auntie's birthdays, um, I sent flowers off a of Groupon. So I have used it within the past 12 months. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, still there. All right. I don't have anything else. Let me Okay. Go. Yes. All right. So thank you, Tia. So I have thank some you. tips to use. I need to go start looking for some money myself. Um, <laughs> yeah, these streaming fees. Uh-huh. <laughs> They, they can be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so well, I, you know what I did? Um, ju I just did it this week and I've been saying, yep, it's me. My It's my internet today. I don't know what's going on. Can you hear me, Tia? Yes, I can it's hear you. It's all me, guys. I can hear you. It's frozen, but I can hear you. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's me. I don't know what's going on today here in Baltimore, but... Um, I went through all of my Amazon subscriptions. Mm. Oh, I see Beulah has a question. Okay, so Beulah was asking, how would you suggest budgeting for a new business? Wow, um, that's a good question, Beulah. Um, well, let me see. I am not a business owner. Um, I have worked with lots of businesses in the past. Um, I would say think of maybe the, the big things that you're going to be doing with your business, right? If you're just getting it off the ground, right? Um, you might have some services, right? You may need phone, internet, um, you know, those types of services. I would say start start there think about possibly how you want to market for your business right um add that to your budget um think about like overhead supplies things like that a location um, are you going to have employees so those are the types of things that i might start with with my business and then try to figure out um I don't know. how I much money i may need to do these things 
And if you're just starting out and you don't have clients yet, if you don't have like a little nest egg that's going to get you going, it might be kind of hard, you know, to kind of start that budget if the money hasn't come in yet. And, it, you know, whether or not you have some sort of uh, savings or um, uh, grant money or, you know, whatever it is. But for me, I might kind of start there. I don't know, Danette, you you are running CDPD and you are such an established businesswoman. How would you answer Beulah's question? Guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think I have tech issues. I think we both have them here. Are we both uh, having them? Um, I can hear you yeah. okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, because you disappeared. I disappeared. So I think we both ah. have a slow connection. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I know okay. I have one. Um, so, okay, Beulah, uh, it depends. If, if you're budgeting, if you mean how are you budgeting for your business, first I would say, uh, are you okay for your home first, right? So if everything is okay, your money is okay for your home, um, then you can start to, you know, put money aside for your business. Right. But a lot of times we have businesses that don't require much investment. Right. So it could be a line item in your own personal budget. I think the best way is to determine like what it is you're all. Oh, I can't hear Danette anymore. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know. It's it's my it's definitely my connection on my end. Um, well, you're back. <laughs> you're back now. You can, can hear me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. Ah oh, man. Okay. Yeah, Beulah. There are a bunch of ways. Connect with me. I can help you. <laughs> there you go, Beulah. <laughs> I can help you. Um, I know you're visiting us from YouTube, but come on over to Facebook and connect with me. I can help you or LinkedIn um, to figure that one out. Let me see if this internet will let me go through my, get through my questions. Guys, if you have any more questions, you're more than welcome to drop them in the chat. Um, and I'm, I am... Uh-oh, <laughs> I lost you again tonight. Okay, guys, so if you can hear me and see me, I, we might have lost Danette. I don't even know if you can hear or see me, but um, I'm going to hang in there for another couple of minutes and see if she can come back. All right, guys, I'm back. Tia, you back? Yep, I'm here. Oh, both of us. All right. <laughs> so for your patience, because I, I I left and came back and everything. Um, no problem. So let me I'll pop it and maybe that'll help. So uh, let me see if I can ask you our questions. You guys okay. pop anything to that, though. So um, you know our first question is on marginalization. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you if you ever, if you've ever been marginalized in a situation where you believe you were marginalized. If so, could you share that with us? Yeah, sure. Um, oh, this ain't gonna let us do this. You know what? Okay, it is. Okay. Okay. Mar marginal marginalization. Um, 
Yes, definitely. I felt marginalized as a young person, you know, starting in my work career um, as a woman, a black woman, definitely felt marginalized. Um, and the only thing that I can say is I just refuse to wear that coat. You know what I mean? I'm not going to wear it. That's, you know, your narrative for me is not my narrative. So it feels crummy, but you have to, you know, work through it. You know, just just keep speaking, keep being seen, keep being yourself, and and it'll take care of itself. I love it. I don't know if people can hear me. Uh, guys, this is like the first time we had such terrible connectivity. I love it. I'm not going to wear that coat, you know? Um, yeah. Many people get in situations where they are marginalized by others, and then they begin to marginalize themselves, you right. know? Um, they begin to let it define them. And so that's a great thing. I love that, that you, you say, you know, I'm not going to wear it. You know, turn that mm -hmm. on its ear. Um, right. <laughs> let's ask my favorite question because I hate that we're having connectivity issues and I want to get my favorite question out there okay. as soon as you come back on. All right. Mm -hmm. So my favorite question is if you could go back to a younger Tia. All right. I'm going to end. Okay. They'll be back. I was like, oh, I'm about to end this because we both disappeared <laughs> for a minute. Um, and Stormy's looking at me like I'm crazy. If you can go back and tap a younger Tia on the shoulder, um, what would you tell her, particularly about what we talked about today, about what you presented today, Money in Your Wallet? Wow, okay. Um, I knew this question was coming, and I had so many things I would tell my younger self. Well, but... go ahead. Go. It could be anything. Oh. It could be anything. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, all right. Well, mm -hmm. as far as money in my wallet, um, I would have started investing earlier. I would have figured out a way to learn, you know, beyond just the 401k, you know, where we kind of set it and forget it. I think mm -hmm. I would have, uh, I would say, take a, a stronger interest in investing, um, you know, invest more, save more. Mm -hmm. And outside of that, just telling my younger self, it's something that I learned over time, but I always say like, Everything in life has a 50-50 chance of working out, right? It either will or it won't, right? So you might as well just give it a shot because you have 50% chance it won't work, 50% chance it will. It's equal. Just go ahead and go for it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You might as well just do it. So that's the other thing that I would tell myself because I, I learned that way later. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. All right. So any parting words, anything you want to leave us with one takeaway for this evening? Yeah, um, I would say this is a personal challenge. Right. And I, I even have to do a little bit of this myself, but I would challenge you to go back and look at your services. Right. Um, as well as, you know, go look at the three ways I mentioned about, you know, uh, finding new money. Mm -hmm. and maybe do some research, see if you can put some of those, you know, suggestions out there, um, if you can put them into play and, you know, come back and tell me if you manage to save any money. I love and that. I'd be happy to hear that. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Now, if you would have, if you would have done this last week, I would have told you sure, because I think I just found 15. I just found about, $60 by going, no, more than 60 because I got rid of uh, Audible. Okay. Got rid of Audible. I got rid of the streaming HBO on mm -hmm. on um, Prime. I got rid of, uh, <laughs> oh gosh, Cinemax on Prime. Uh -huh. Because what, what happened was Prime had a deal where it was like $1.99 for six months. Oh and wow! So, okay. Yeah, so some it was something crazy like that, and so it was time for me to get it. If I didn't, gotcha. it was going to go up to the whatever you know, like fifteen ninety nine or whatever it was. So right. I went and got, I got that gone. Got um, and I got oh and a, a body FX which I haven't used 
in forever. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's like a gym membership, but on your you know streaming service. So I, yeah. actually, I probably saved about 80 bucks last week. Yeah. I just did it. I think I did that Monday evening. Mm -hmm. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, that Monday evening. Yeah, because I was like, wait a minute, let me stop spending this money. I don't need any more books from Audible. You know, like, I could go to the library. Like, I don't need That's it. <laughs> you don't even have to go to the library. You can do the library online. Online, so, yeah, you know. Yeah, so I, yeah. I, don't, I, don't need, I don't need it. That, so, that's uh, great. That 80 bucks a month, that's your thousand dollars a year, roughly, right? Mm -hmm, that's yeah. Great. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I said it. no. Yeah. So, yeah, this was really helpful, guys. I would be curious to see, you know, who, um, who followed some of these, these tips and if you save money as well. So Tia, I'm sorry we had internet connectivity today. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually it doesn't happen so long, but we are, we're able to um, get through it. I appreciate you for coming out. You know, if you ever want to come back, you're welcome to come back. Thanks so much. And I appreciate you for running the screen for, for me. Thanks oh, so no much. Problem. It was a no pleasure being here. Thank you. All right, then. You have a good night, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's have one tomorrow that was a last minute, guys, but you see it in the group, come back for it. Uh, this young man has a really inspirational story how he just fed a homeless man one night after uh, working, hanging out, I'm sorry, he was a party promoter after working, uh, went to eat, fed a, fed a homeless man, and that turned into a whole revolution uh, where he's feeding thousands of homeless people in Skid Row and helping people to get into permanent housing. So come on out tomorrow at 6 p.m. And hopefully I will not have any IT issues. Thank you all. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. All right.